What's up guys, my name is Brandon and earlier in the week Apple released iOS 14.3 and iPadOS 14.3 and I've been using it every single day since on multiple devices including my iPhone 12 Pro Max, the iPad Pro 12.9 and even my iPhone 7 Plus. So in this video I wanted to share my updated thoughts on the software and discuss the battery life, the performance, the connectivity and even some additional new features and changes that I found in the software after using it for a little while. So before we talk about the battery life, the performance and things like that, let's talk about some additional new features and changes that I found in 14.3 after using it for a little while. I also want to touch on things like Fitness Plus, things like Apple Pro Raw, the Pro Raw format, things like that, and kind of just how they've been running for me over the past week or so. So first off, iOS 14.3 brought dynamic wallpapers to iOS. So I did actually make a full dedicated video to how to set a dynamic wallpaper on your phone, and I will leave that linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But iOS 14.3 now gives us the ability to set dynamic wallpapers via shortcuts and automations. So we have the new set you know, lock screen and home screen wallpaper two, which is new here. This action is new in iOS 14.3. Then of course you can make the automation to trigger that shortcut. And again, if you wanna learn how to do that, I will leave that linked in the cards and down in the description below. Now also new in iOS 14.3 is inside of the health application, we have cardio fitness notifications. So this is especially beneficial if you do have an Apple watch and you do need to be on 7.2 as well to take full advantage of the cardio fitness notifications. So you can see this is inside of the health application here and you can learn more about that in here as well. So I did mention this in a previous beta of 14.3, but I did not mention this in my what's new video. So I just wanted to cover it here. Now also inside of the TV application, you can see down here, we have a new tab for originals. So when I originally made my 14.3 what's new video, this tab was not yet available. So this was pushed server side from Apple. And you can see here now we have a new dedicated section, a new tab for Apple TV Plus originals where you can see different movies and TV shows that are available for TV Plus subscribers. I've also noticed that more playlists and albums inside of Apple Music now have the animated cover art as you can see right here. So I've noticed more and more playlists, especially the ones from Apple themselves, like different versions of Apple, like Apple Music Pop, an example for here. I've noticed that there are a lot more animated cover arts now for playlists. So that's new in 14.3. Now there is also a toggle for this. If you go to your music section down here and then go to animated cover art right here, you can see you have the ability to turn that on or off right there. Another thing to keep in mind with the animated cover arts is that reduced motion does have an effect on this. So if you turn on reduced motion and you go back to music, you will notice that the cover art does not move. So you do need to have reduced motion turned off for this to work properly. So you can see the animated covers there inside of Apple Music. Now, another new feature that was pushed server side from Apple and not necessarily in iOS 14.3, but it came out right after 14.3 are the app privacy labels right here. So you can see the app privacy section of every app in the app store is now updated and it shows you really important information that you would want to know. So it says data used to track you, data linked to you, and you can kind of just see all of the different you know, data that is being taken from you and used from these applications. So you can see it's a pretty long laundry list here from Facebook. And that's, you know, kind of at the center of some controversy right now with Apple, but you can see all of these details about app privacy and Apple makes it very easy to read now with iOS 14.3 and above. So that is good for privacy. Now, also if we go into our settings here, and then go to our accessibility. If we go into sound recognition, make sure sound recognition is turned on, go to sounds. Under people, you will notice that the coughing sound has been removed for some reason. So before there was a toggle there for coughing, but for whatever reason that has been removed. I've also heard that the auto brightness bug has finally been addressed in iOS 14.3. So I did not know this before I saw a comment that was thumbs up like 80 times on my iOS 14.3 what's new video. And a lot of people seem to agree that the auto brightness bug has been addressed and fixed in 14.3. Now I never faced this bug, but as you can see here, a lot of people did and it has been fixed. Now, speaking of bugs that have been fixed in iOS 14.3, the text message notification bug has finally been fixed. And it's not just for me, it's for pretty much everybody that I've seen in the comments and my Discord server. You know, there are some people still who say they have issues receiving notifications with messages, 
but the majority of people, myself included, have not had any issues with receiving notifications now in iOS 14.3 and above. And what's weird is that we went through all of the iOS 14.3 beta stages, even after RC1, it wasn't until RC2 was pushed for developers and public beta testers until we finally got a fix for that. So Apple really waited until the last minute to implement that bug fix for 14.3, but thankfully they have because now I've not had any issue receiving my notifications notification sounds, badges, any of that. So that is really good news. Now I did also wanna talk about Apple Fitness Plus because Fitness Plus is amazing. I love how real the classes seem, like the instructors are talking straight to you. It really feels like you're there, you know, like in a gym. That's what Apple is really trying to do with this. It's really similar to a Peloton, not exactly because it's not live like Peloton is, but Apple Fitness Plus is pretty close to that. I mean, and it's really cool. And I think this is going to be an extremely successful service from Apple. So I love how they talk you through like stretching and things like that before you get going on, you know, whatever you're doing. So if I go to my summary here, you can see I did the strength with Greg. So this is one of the programs that I did go into and you can see this is how the layout is. Of course it is integrated with Apple Music so you can add all the songs you know, to your Apple Music playlist or to your library right there. You can see related workouts down here as well. So if we go to this, I just wanna talk about some of the things that I really like. And of course, you can see it does pop up on my Apple Watch here as well. It's really well integrated with the Apple Watch, but you don't have to always use your Apple Watch to do these. So you can, you know, opt to not use the Apple Watch if you want to. And I love how you get a countdown and things like that before you start as well. You do also have you know, you can't fast forward in these, which is kind of nice. I like how you can't fast forward, but you can see up in the top left, it shows like my heart rate right now, how many calories I'm burning, and it shows the timer. Now, if I didn't have my Apple Watch on, it would only show the timer up in the top left, and I wouldn't have those rings there in the top right. But if you tap on this, you can actually turn off, you know, the top left right there, and you can also turn off the metrics so you don't have really anything on the screen right here. But yeah, I love the idea of Apple Fitness Plus and I'm definitely going to be using it a lot more. I've used it quite a bit with my Apple Watch in addition to you know just the app on here as well. It's really nice. I haven't used it with Apple TV yet or anything like that, but Apple Fitness Plus, it's $10 a month. I don't know for sure if it's worth it yet, but I would assume it's worth it for a lot of people who don't have access to a gym right now and those that maybe don't have a Peloton. So super promising. I will have a more long-term you know, outlook and review on Fitness Plus later on down the road. Now, the other biggest feature in iOS 14.3 is Apple's Pro Raw format for the iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max. And I've been actually loving the Pro Raw format. So I've been using it a lot on my iPhone 12 Pro, which is my current daily driver down here. I've been using Pro Raw a lot to take photos, especially of things like landscapes or, you know, sunsets, sunrises, whatever the case may be, important photos that you can really manipulate and edit a lot. I love doing that because once you take a photo, of course you do still use the default built-in editor. Of course you can take it into Photoshop if you want, but the edits are just much more effective and you retain a lot more detail when you shoot raw. The only downside I've noticed is that as you can see up there, live photos are disabled when you take a raw photo. So you cannot do both. If you have raw turned on, you cannot turn on live photo. So right when you turn on live photos, it disables raw. And right when you turn on raw, it disables live photos. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance has been excellent on iOS 14.3. So tons of bugs were patched in this update and the text message notification bug and you know the auto brightness bug, things like that were some of the big bugs that have been lasting for a good while. So the fact that both of those have been fixed in itself are going to be giving you a better experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So those alone, not to mention just the raw performance on 14.3 is better than 14.2 and 14.2.1. So really no complaints as far as the performance so far on 14.3. I've had zero app crashes, zero random reboots. I've had minor lag from time to time, like pulling up the keyboard from the messages application or when I go into messages, the keyboard still lags a little bit. That has still not been solved, but that does not happen every single time. So overall, the performance on 14.3 is excellent and I have noticed a bump in performance going from 14.2 and 14.2.1 to 14.3 on pretty much every device, even my iPad Pro there. Now, when it comes to the battery life, battery life, once again, I say this, I feel like in every video, but I'm just being real with you guys. The battery life is not any different from 14.2 or 14.2.1 in my opinion. I've not noticed any difference when going to bed in terms of how much percentage I have left, how much battery percentage I have left. So I would just assume that it is the same. I've not run a full battery test video 
just from version to version. Maybe I will in the future, but I have not noticed any significant time difference. So I would just go out and say that the battery life is pretty much the same and that you should not update if you're just wanting to get better battery life. Now, when it comes to cell connectivity, this is an area where 14.3 really didn't do anything. I mean, it's about the same as 14.2 for me, which is really unfortunate because we did get a big modem firmware update in 14.3. So I assumed that we were going to have some fixes for cell connectivity, you know, drop calls, things like that. But I'm still struggling with receiving data and, you know, kind of maintaining steady data on Verizon when switching from 5G to LTE or vice versa. So like when I go through an area with 5G, you know, it'll go from LTE to 5G. And while it's transitioning, I'll kind of just lose signal. I won't lose signal, but I will lose data. I won't get any data. Things will take a while to load. My music will pause, things like that. It's really annoying and it could just be my area, but still, I didn't have that at all with the iPhone 11 series in that same area. So hopefully iOS 14.4 will fix any type of cell connectivity issues you're having, or maybe it's just me, maybe I'm the only one having these issues, but nonetheless, I will let you guys know when 14.4 finally gets released. And I'll talk about when that will get released later on down the road. So anyways, now let's go ahead and take a look at the community poll, which I actually just posted about earlier today. So if we go to my channel and go over to the community tab, you can see that 15 hours ago, I said, how has iOS 14.3 been for you so far? And in those 15 hours, we got 32,000 votes. So thank you guys for voting. This really helps me out understand, you know, where everybody else stands because it's not just about me and my devices. It's also about you guys and trying to learn, you know, how the software is running for most of you guys. So as you can see, 46% of people said excellent, no annoying bugs and good battery. 16% said good, just some minor bugs. 8% said decent, buggy and bad battery. 2% said it was so terrible they had to downgrade and 27% said they are not on 14.3. So those are some pretty solid numbers. 46% of 32,000 people said it's excellent with no annoying bugs and good battery life. So that is by far the majority there. And if we go down, let's read some of these comments and see some experiences you guys are having. So you can see here, I have the pinned comment asking if the text message notification bug has been fixed for you. And if we take a look at the replies, you can see most people are saying that this bug has in fact been fixed, which is huge because this has been going on again for a good while now. So now taking a look at the comments, you can see here, Tony said there's a delay when you scroll or send a message, the screen will be like slow-mo. So not too sure what he means with that, but a lot of people do have issues when it comes to messages and lag, especially with the keyboard. You can see here, Shake, I hope I said that right, said best iOS 14 version yet. There is an occasional memory loss in the background apps, but nothing serious. And you can see here, Ivan says that when switching apps or swipe to home, it would still stutter at times on his iPhone 12 Pro Max. And it seems like some other people are having this issue as well with stutter, even on the top of the line iPhone 12 Pro Max. So that's interesting. I've not had any type of stuttering at all in 14.3 myself. You can see here, Mark says battery is acting kind of strange and it's draining a little faster than 14.2. So as you can see, 52 people, thumbs that up as well. And this is one of those things where, you know, no matter how good battery life is or how much it's improved, there's always going to be somebody and, you know, a group of people who are not getting better battery life. So it's all pretty subjective and it depends a lot on what you do throughout the day because see here, some people are having battery drain on 14.3 and even faster than 14.2. So that's interesting. And then Sebastian said that it's great, but the only issue is that he's having VPN issues. So he says, when I'm sleeping without using my phone, it consumes all of my battery in the next day. I don't have battery left. So that seems to be an issue with somebody else here as well. 15 to 20% drain for him. So interesting little issue going on there. Someone said they're using the iPhone 10 R no bugs so far. I like the redirection of the custom app icon shortcut, but I'm just waiting for Apple to remove the small pop-up that comes up when the shortcut is completed. So I did talk about that in my recent video. You can actually disable that. I'll just show you on this phone right here. So if you go into your settings and then go down to screen time and then to see all activity and then down to notifications down here, go to show more. And if you can't click on shortcuts, just tap on daily average right here. Just tap on like one of these days right here and then tap off of it. And then you should be able to go into shortcuts and that's where you can disable the notifications right there. You can see here that the thumbs up emoji said that he's on iPhone 11 and seriously, there's not even one bug. Everything works perfectly and the battery life is not bad. So it looks like a lot of people are agreeing with him right there as well. So that is good news 
for 14.3. Someone on an iPhone SE 2020 said that the speed launching apps is faster compared to previous versions. So that's good to hear. Performance has definitely improved for me as well. You can see here that Darren says, one bug I'm experiencing is when I close an app that's not on the home page that's open, it closes, but the icon goes to the abstract spot on the screen. So it seems like eight people also agree with him there. So if you are having that bug, I don't think I've experienced that one, but if you have, let me know in a comment down below. And Casey here said that he sometimes cannot connect to his home's Wi-Fi, and it's so annoying. Even though the Wi-Fi is working, it just won't connect. So that happened to me before. I believe it was iOS 14.1, but it has not come back. It may just be an issue with your Wi-Fi router or your, just your connection in general. I don't know that that's necessarily tied to 14.3. And then you can see here that somebody said that it dropped down his maximum battery capacity on the iPhone 10R. But once again, I feel like I always say this, the update does not affect your maximum capacity. It does not, you know, reduce your capacity. All it does is simply rechecks the battery and gives you a more accurate reading every time you update. So I'm assuming some people will say that in here as well. So no, nobody said that in here. So maybe it's not as well known, but the updates do not impact your maximum battery capacity. That is just basically giving you a better reading every time you update of your actual battery percentage. And then there's just a lot of other comments in here as well. You guys can go ahead and read them if you want to and just chime in with your thoughts. And if you're having any of these bugs that other people are having, go ahead and leave a reply on these comments here. I really appreciate everybody who left a comment on this post. It really helps me out. And you know, I'm addressing these as well. And hopefully Apple sees some of these issues that you guys are having that I'm able to report on here in the video. So now let's talk about when we can expect iOS 14.4 to be released to the public. So as you guys know, if you follow my channel, iOS 14.4 beta one was just released the other day. So this week, now I would not expect a second beta of iOS 14.4 to be released until January, which means that we probably won't see the final public release of iOS 14.4, the update that everybody's going to get until late January or even maybe early February. So I would not expect a new iOS update until at least then. So we do have a while to be sticking with iOS 14.3. But of course, if things change, you guys know I will keep you updated as always here on the channel with every iOS update. But yeah, guys, that is iOS 14.3. That is my follow-up review on the software after using it for a good while now, especially since I had the RC2 on my main device, which did end up being the final version. So I've had a good amount of time with 14.3 and I love it. I definitely think that most people should upgrade, especially if you have an iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max, so you can take advantage of the new Pro Raw format. Not to mention Apple Fitness Plus is going to be huge. I think it's gonna be very successful with time, especially since we're in a pandemic still. So I think that's gonna be very successful and I will personally be using it a lot more as well and let you guys know in a long-term review how I've been liking it. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this iOS 14.3 follow-up review. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe for a lot more iOS update videos and follow-up reviews like this one here. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.